All right, folks, happy Bound for Glory Day. This is BQ. This is the Impact Lounge. This is the number one channel for Impact Wrestling fans. So if it's your first time swinging by here, please hit the subscribe button. We're talking Impact Wrestling as much as possible in a positive light on this channel. So definitely hit subscribe so you can be a part of it. In the place to be right now, I've got I've got Adam, and uh, he's obviously a part of the channel, a part of the Impact reviews that we do and everything, but you've probably heard him on the Impact Wrestling conference calls each week. There was one week that I filled in, but for the most part, Adam always does these conference calls, and I always upload the conference calls to the channels and I know into the channel, and I know that it's kind of long, so we're going to start doing something a little bit different. Adam's going to hop on, and we're going to talk about the call a little bit some of the highlights some of the thoughts and i'll still upload the call for those who want to hear it but for some people i know you don't want to sit through the whole thing so we're going to kind of run through it and uh, he's going to give his thoughts so adam um thanks for uh thanks for doing that yesterday i know that was kind of a last minute on that conference call it's usually on tuesday or wednesday so yeah it was enjoyable uh, i've got to say that sometimes you know these conference calls can be a little bit dry and and it's always very difficult when you get some people who stay in character and other guys are quite happy to talk about the backstage kind of stuff. So it's always very interesting because you don't know what you're going to get. And uh, I've got to say that Alberto was fantastic yesterday. Um, you know, I can understand why promoters like him and he keeps getting lots of chances, you know, with different companies and, and why. Because he, he does treat the companies that he represents like a star and, and he's very, very eloquent, you know. So, yeah, it, it was a really good one. And I'm not sure if you're going to upload uh, the whole teleconference as well later on the week when it comes available. But if we don't upload it to the Impact Lounge channel, then I would certainly say, you know, I'm sure you'll find it on some of the other dirt sheets out there. It's well worth a listen. Yeah, no, I, I fully I fully plan on uh, uploading it. It's just, I know some people can't sit through the whole thing, don't want to sit through the whole thing. So we can uh, talk about it a little bit here and, and people can get a, a better idea of what was discussed and your opinions and everything. So, Cool. All right. Well, I think the first thing's first. Um, I, I, I've been on some of the impact reviews and uh, I, when he was a WWE guy, I was ne never particularly a fan his character or did i buy into him as a star or any of those kind of things i always thought he was a legit great wrestler you know as in in ring talent very good but he never had a program that i bought into or really cared about um so when he joined impact and i know you were there on his debut night which uh, i'm sure you'll, you'll you'll tell us about again in a second but when he joined impact i've got to say it didn't fill me with like oh great fantastic we've got a real star here. it was just like uh, okay let's see where this goes but, uh, and this conference call reiterates that, I'll go into what he talks about in a second, but my time of watching him, being part of the Slammiversary tapings, watching those, he comes over as a, a real top guy. And I really think that he has got a lot to offer whoever he's with. And I think his run in Impact so far, although he was pushed a bit down our throats in those first sets of tapings, I think he's been excellent for, for Impact and a real asset and listening to the call yesterday which we're going to do in a second uh he was brilliant you know really pro the company came over like a professional and uh talked about all the issues that were going on in his life over these last six months uh you know in a really open honest way so yeah for me he's a positive guy to have around the locker room and and yeah i, I think a real asset so you, you were there weren't you on his debut I was. Um, I've talked about it on the ch on the channel several times, and um, I, man, that place went nuts when he showed up. And it's so unfortunate that the few hundred people there were the only people to see that, because if if you remember the Tron behind him, the big screen misspelled his name to Alberto Del Patron, and uh, it, it's it's funny because I left the night calling him that. Um, I I did I do specifically remember seeing that, and it just didn't register in my head that's not really his name and i remember i was talking about him on twitter so i'm like yeah alberto del patron and and then then i was like oh my god it's not even correct so it's really unfortunate that people didn't see that because the place went absolutely nuts and unfortunately ed nordholm kind of set out a tweet earlier in the day with him in the ring so there was kind of speculation that he was there but it was kind of one of those things you just you forgot about and we're sitting there and they're um you know, I think Bruce might have been cutting a promo at the time, and all of a sudden that music hit, and I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, everybody was on their feet. Uh, 
my wife was next to me. She was like, she's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> when he came out. Um, and much like you, when I was a, when I used to watch WWE, I did not like him at all. There were two wrestlers I always fast forwarded through, and it was him and uh, Rey Mysterio. And only because Rey Mysterio, I thought his matches were all super similar, and it was just, it just, I, I got bored of him. But uh, El Patron or Del Rio at the time, I didn't care for him at all. And um, it just really all changed that night that I saw him debut because I felt the energy. I felt my own energy. Um, you know, I, I, I shot up right away. And I was like, oh my God. And I mean, the, when he won the title at the end of the night, which, as you said, was kind of, sh you know, shoved down our throat a little bit. Uh, when he won, it, I was like, oh, my God, they did it again. They put it on a WWE guy like I, I was like, oh, my God. But the place was just bananas. I mean, after the, you know, the show went off air, so to speak, I mean, he was, you know, holding up the belt to the crowd and everyone was CCC. I mean, it, it was nuts in there. And it just it's so unfortunate they had to redo it. And we got that watered down version mm -hmm. on TV. But it was insane. It's the same when I was at the last tapings, you know, he came into the crowd a few times and funny enough uh, on the tapings, fans of the show can see me when he was stood in the crowd. I was, he stood right behind me and my daughter. So, uh, uh, yeah, he, he really does get a good reaction. But um, you said one thing about his music. Funny enough, that's the one thing I absolutely love about this incarnation of him. I think his, his theme music is brilliant. And over the four or five night tapings that I was there, I think I, I did three of them from memory. Um, because he had a lot of in-ring segments and lots of segments, we heard that tune two, three times each night. So it kind of brainwashed into my psyche. So even when I was walking home the third night, I was humming his theme tune, and I, and I love it. Not since Aces of Eights and Eights, shall I say, has uh, been such a good theme song, I think, for the wrestlers in, in Impact. But anyway, um, going back to, to what he was talking about yesterday. So um, just uh, if you do get a chance to listen to it, please do go and have a listen, uh, listeners. But what he... I mean, obviously, a lot of the questions came around the suspension and he was talking about the suspension quite open and honestly. And, and he said, look, you know, ultimately he's been cleared, but uh, it was just him and his fiance Paige having a bad day at the office, as he said. You know, every relationship has it where things someone says something to each other and things escalate, you know, and 10 minutes later, it's all good. But unfortunately, a member of the public decided to make an issue of it and blow it all out of proportion and eventually he's been vindicated which okay he's going to say that even if it was worse than it was than, than he says he is but the way that he was spinning it was that you know this has happened it you know he's still very much in love with Paige you know they're still very very strong um and that really there was it was a bit of an invasion of his invasion of his privacy however he was very complimentary about impact and how they handled the situation and that was really positive because you could tell that he was speaking from the heart a lot of the time on this call. And uh, he, he was saying they absolutely did the right thing uh, in stripping him of it. And I know at the time there was a lot of talk about he was in, instrumental in, in volunteering to be stripped. And he kind of repeated that same line in the court yesterday. But what he was saying was that, you know, he doesn't want to be held on a pedestal above the other guys who have been busting their their ass in the locker room for the last you know six months two years whatever he said he wants to be treated the same and if any if the same things that happened to him happened to anyone else they would be pushed down the car they would lose their belt etc and he said it was absolutely the right thing to to be stripped under the circumstances but now that he's back he wants to go back for the title so it, it was just really really refreshing to see someone uh I suppose admitting to his mistakes, but also supporting the company line that was taken. And you know yourself, Beaker, you've listened to these conference calls lots of times. There's sometimes on these calls, people don't tow the company line. You know, for example, when we had James Storm on there, he was like saying, you know, how X storyline was, was ruined. I think he was talking about the DCC saying that they had really good plans for that. And he talked about it, but it was just all pulled out. Whereas, you know, he could have done the same. I could have said whatever he wants. You know, he used to go off script at the end of after every taping, you know, he'd always do a cut up for promo on WWE. So it was refreshing that a guy who's very, very honest, usually anyway, and speaks his mind, was very complimentary about Impact backstage. And he was also very complimentary about Jeff as well. Uh, said that, you know, he likes Jeff as a person, etc. But, you know, the atmosphere backstage is still good. And, you know, the people running the company have been nothing but professional throughout the whole thing, which is nice to hear. Did you feel like most of the conference call, I think you might have said that actually, most of the conference call was probably directed at 
at that uh, suspension? Um, well, surprisingly not. Um, uh, and I, th- I can't remember if he was the one who kind of brought it up, to be honest, that maybe to get the elephant out of the room. But um, uh, no, there, there was a lot of other questions. I mean, the question I asked him was about, can he reveal where he's likely to appear on the card? And I said, obviously, we don't want to spoil things for anyone. But I said, you know, can you talk about potentially, you know, are you going to go after LAX? Are you going to be, you know, is there an official, you're being added to the main event, you're a referee or whatever. And um, he was saying, yeah, he wants to, you know, he's obviously going to address the LAX thing because that was a big part of his storyline. But at the moment, he feels that Eli Drake is a paper champion because he hasn't beaten the man who held the championship before him. Uh, he hasn't beaten anyone yet. So he's coming after Eli Drake, which makes you think he's going to be involved in the main event angle. But it seemed like the way he was positioning it, and this might be something that uh, a bit of a sigh of relief for, for people who are looking forward to the main event as it is. It seemed to me very much that he's coming to maybe to cut an in-ring promo during the night. That's not to say he's not going to interfere, but it very much appeared to me that he's going to come down to the ring between matches and cut a promo on, on Eli Drake and Johnny Impact or, or whatever. Would you be okay if that's what he did? Um, uh, we've talked about it on the show that, that, that the main event is lacking a bit of star power. And I definitely think that the last image of the show is unlikely to be either Johnny Impact or Eli Drake holding up the belt as a, with a clean win. I think that there's going to be some shenanigans and of some sort, whether that's Alberto, whether it's LAX or whoever. I think uh, it needs something to happen other than a, just a straight up match, because I don't think that the two of them are big enough star powers in the main event to, to carry off the biggest main event of the year for the company. I think something does need to happen to get people tuning in the next night. If it's a straight up match, I think it will fail. So, so um, will I be okay if he comes out and cuts a promo? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think it's more likely that you'll cut a promo and then something will happen in the main event that includes him. I don't know what. And we've talked about that quite a bit on the podcast when we're uh, reviewing Impact, that they haven't even been able to go off air with Eli Drake, with the exception of him winning the title. They've been afraid to go off the air with him or Johnny Impact. You know, there's, uh, there's always a follow-up American's top team, or something with Triple A, or something. there's always just, or you know, there's just always something else. Uh, Moose Lashley, I can't, I can't see Bound for Glory going off the air with one of these guys. It should, especially if Eli Drake wins, they should have the confidence to do that. But it hasn't been happening so far, so I would have to imagine he's he's gonna have something to do with this. He he absolutely has to. And remember, uh, Eli Drake was on the phone call. Um, this last episode of Impact, or not not this last episode, but the week before, that looked like it sounded like he was talking to Alberto, if you remember that. Going back to your other question about, um, you know, what else did he talk about? <laughs> One funny thing is, although I've been just been singing about his praises and things and how professional he's been, uh, a thing that did come over was that uh, it's quite obvious that he hasn't been watching the show since he's been off it. <laughs> <laughs> which uh, th- there was a very funny moment where someone asked him about, you know, who do you want to face, Eli Drake or Johnny Impact or something like that, if you do go back into the main event scene. And he said, who's Johnny Impact? And it was an embarrassing moment. And I think maybe the media guy from from um, uh, Impact was saying to him, it's John Morrison or Johnny Mundo. And he goes, oh, you mean Johnny Morrison? Uh, jo- Johnny Mundo. He goes, oh, is Johnny Impact now? Really? That's his name. That's crazy, man. <laughs> you know, so it was it was obvi- it was quite a funny moment, but it was obvious that he hadn't hasn't been watching it, you know, and he's just coming back into it, which is a bit of a shame because it goes against all the good work you're saying about, you know, being involved backstage of Impact. And, and there was also a question about, you know, the, his MMA background with uh, the, the street fight, um, not street fight, the, the, the t- America's top team. And, and once again, because he hasn't been watching, I don't think he knows that match is happening. So he started talking about his MMA career and saying, no, he doesn't want to go back into MMA. So uh, for all his positives, I, I think that he has pretty much switched off from wrestling for the last six months or however long it's been, three, four months. Uh, and maybe that's a good thing. But he was very complimentary once again about he likes the taping schedule. Uh, he likes the fact that you can rest up your body, uh, that you don't have to you know, be on the road every week you know all year round and he said it works much better for someone you know of his age that you can go in do five days worth of taping and then that's him you know on telly for the next three months without having to do anything else so he, he was he said you know it suits him perfectly and he kept on referring to it as the other company not wwe he kept on saying uh, the other company uh, that's not what they do 
and, and he seemed to implicate that they treat the talent better at impact. Yeah, isn't it funny how it's always kind of depending on who you talk? I mean, everyone has a different situation and a different different experience. Um, it's going to happen to me in my place of work. You know, I'm going to I might speak glowingly about someone and someone else might say how much they absolutely hate that person. And it, it's, it's kind of funny how, how that kind of changes from person to person when we're, when we're talking about impact. Um, but it sounds like he's I mean, he had some bad experiences um, when he was over there. So. You know, I can see where he's he's pretty happy and everything. But he, you know, so it sounds like he, he's definitely on board with everything. Yeah, absolutely. And he said that, you know, he really thinks that he's got another good year in him. You know, 2018, uh, he'll still be wrestling. Uh, so he's not planning on quitting, you know, throughout the year. So, you know, it's not like he'll be a short term champ or, or champion or program that he's going into. It looks like he's going to be there for certainly the medium term, if not you know longer. So that, that was positive as well. Um, once again, I don't think he read the impact memo about the pizza, the impact pizza, because he kept on talking about some other pizza joint uh, in Canada, uh, which was quite embarrassing. I could feel that the media guy, you know, cringing every time he mentioned this other pizza chain uh, and their wings. So that was, once again, quite funny. He didn't read the, the memo about the, uh, the sponsorship. But all in all, he was really positive. He, he had a real, it showed he had a real passion about the business, which... A lot of these guys who come in, you think, you know, have they really got any passion left for it? You know, because a lot of people criticize, oh, he's an ex-WWE guy, so, you know, he's not trying anymore. But he seemed to have a real passion for it. And uh, I would recommend anyone who wants to listen to it, you know, go on and have a listen. It was a long one. I'll give him that. It was over an hour long, this conference call. Uh, and he was just as positive at the end as at the beginning. All right, good deal. Wasn't EC3 slated to join him on this initially, or at least you thought so? Yeah, that's right. Originally, it was supposed to be, I, I think, the two of them on, but I don't know if um, EC3 couldn't make it or whether uh, it was just Alberto and we got the, the message wrong. I don't know. But to be honest, it wasn't a great loss not having EC3 there. The reason being is we talked to him lots of, about three or four weeks ago anyway. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the program that he's in doesn't really inspire me anyway, this, this AAA uh, feud. So uh, I, I preferred the hour long with Alberto as opposed to half an hour with each and getting half a story. All right, cool. And we'll try to do this, uh, you know, every single week if we can. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to listen to the conference call before we before we sit down and talk about it. In this case, I just I wasn't uh, wasn't able, able to. But I'm going to listen to it today. We'll upload it to the channel and uh, we're going to be looking forward to Bow for Glory. So for Adam, this is BQ. Thanks for swinging by. Please hit that subscribe button and we'll talk to you next time. Peace.